Hi guys, this is Klazar bringing another audio commentary, and this time I'm commentating on what I hope will be an epic matchup between Luxury and Quashin. Um, both these guys, they've been there or thereabouts, they're seasoned pros. This game is being played on Destination, uh, and it looks like we've got Quashin starting up at the top of the map at the 12 o'clock position, and uh, Luxury at the 6 o'clock position in or, uh, brown, I think. Looks like Quashin is in yellow, uh, and it looks like Luxury is in brown. So, this is going to be a good game of StarCraft. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this map. Destination looks like Luxury is in red, actually. I'm not a huge fan of this map. It has We have seen some great games in it, especially some good Terran versus Terrans. Um, and if you haven't seen the other MSL games, uh, please do check them out on my on my on Clazart's account. Um, but uh, there will be. Uh, I do feel that there is an imbalance on this map, and and the statistics do reflect that. At least Terran versus Zerg. I'll have to take back what I said about Protoss versus Terran, but certainly Terran versus Zerg. It's something like 27 to 16. So there does seem to be an imbalance. And uh, if there's anything Luxury and Quashin have in common, it's that both of their best matchups, statistically at least, are versus Zerg. So I really feel that the odds are stacked against Luxury here. Uh, and looks like he's sending a very early scout out. Um, and I think he might actually be, looks like he is going for uh, an overpool. Uh, or actually he hasn't started spawning pool yet, so it's impossible to say. Um, but Luxury has sent a very early scout out because he's obviously uh, worried about what his opponent is going to do or maybe he's going to try and do some sort of cheese. We have seen a proxy hatch go down from a Zerg player on this map. We have seen a Zerg player sneak that uh, drone in behind the opponent. Uh, Huashin sent his SCV out and, and it and looks like they're going to cross paths on separate bridges. Huashin for a second looked like he was going to pull his SCV back to try and stop that drone, but I think he realized that he wasn't going to be able to get back in time and, and stop Lita from getting his drone inside, uh, stop Luxury from getting his drone inside his base. Huashin now starting up his racks. So pretty standard start for Huashin. Uh, and um, interesting enough, Huashin might be trying something interesting here. Huashin uh, has sent his SCV down to the um, 2 o'clock position, so he might be trying to hide some tech here against Luxury. Luxury looks like he might have actually gone for a 12 hatch rebuild, uh, and indeed he has. So Luxury's gone for a 12 hatch rebuild. Washington has got an SCV waiting there. I'm not sure what he's going to be trying to do, whether he's going to try and maybe sneak an expansion when the Zerg player doesn't expect it, or he's going to try and hide some tech uh, or hide a second Rax uh, and maybe and, uh, maybe affect an early rush against Luxury. But I don't think the Terran player needs to do anything outlandish on this map, considering the imbalance already on it. And he is indeed putting a second barracks down that Luxury's not going to be around. But Luxury is scouting around with. It looks like Luxury is scouting around with that drone. Um, or actually, it's his Overlord uh, that's already gone past. So Luxury is now putting his pool down, but the 12 hatchery is going to be vulnerable to this 2 racks build, especially when Luxury doesn't expect it coming. So this is going to be an interesting game of StarCraft. As I said, I expect it to be a really scrappy match between both these players. I expect it to be bloody and hard fought. And I expect both these players to fight tooth and nail and, and foot and everything and just throw everything they have into it. Uh, and it looks like uh, more people do seem to believe uh, in Huashin's ability to win this match than in Luxury's. Uh, and not surprising, again, given the statistics of the map and both players' uh, record versus uh, their respective races. So Huashin now pushing up with an SCV and a Marine. Luxury now bringing the drone up. He's actually going to scout this. So brilliant play by Luxury. Obviously he's seen Terran players do something like this on the map and he was scouting very early on and maneuvering that drone around. So he's seen that second Rax and that's going to give him the information he needs to know to probably try and get an early Sunken down or push some Marines out uh, and make sure <laughs> make sure that he defends his 12 hatch rebuild because otherwise he would have been in huge trouble had he not scouted that. And straight away we see the creep colony going down. Obviously a little closer to his um, natural than he would have liked to have ideally put it. Uh, but nevertheless I think he's going to be in a good position to defend this now that he's seen the two racks coming, he's going to be able to get that sunken done. And I think a sunken break is going to be much harder for a Terran player to fit in. And Luxury trying to stop that SCV from getting the scout on him. He's not going to be able to do that with the first uh, four Zerglings. So the, the second rack straight away being floated by Huashin. And uh, that's going to that's gonna hurt because he's invested the resources in getting that second rack up down early. And he's now been forced to lift it up and float it back over to his base. He, so effectively, Huashin's build has been nullified by Luxury scouting it. Uh, and that's going to give Luxury an advantage on this map. Uh, we do feel that this is a map that, that again, as I said, statistics favor the Terran player on, but now it's it's even Stevens because Huashin is definitely going to be a little bit behind considering that Luxury has gone for a 12 hatch build and Huashin got scouted and was forced to lift his racks up. Although Luxury doesn't know that yet because he obviously pulled his drone away after getting the scout off, so he obviously is still going to be planning for, uh, and, and this might be a clever move by Huashin uh, to, to not actually continue to invest resources in this because Luxury is going to be anticipating uh, a, an attempt from the Terran player to go for a break with a two racks break, but that's not going to come and Luxury uh, has an opportunity to put his third hatchery down, but I think he's actually putting a spire down, so Luxury is now going for uh, a two-hatchery uh, two build. He has bought, got 
it is SCBR. Obviously, uh, even with the one racks, the Terran player can uh, put some pressure on the Zerg opponent. But again, coming down that bridge, coming down those narrow bridges with this, with the two sunkens in place, Luxury's going to be in a comfortable place to defend this. Uh, looks like Huashin now putting his factory down. So I, I, I expect to be a good contest between these two players. The early advantage certainly looks to be nullified. Uh, but again, I haven't watched enough turn versus Zerg matches on Destination to really know how exactly the balances of, of play is affected. Obviously, Huashin's got his academy down. Um, but yeah, Huashin has been playing some great StarCraft recently. Uh, and again, I'm going to be spoiling the results of some of the previous matches if you guys haven't seen them. So I'm warning you uh, for that right now beforehand. But Huashin, in the round of 32, in this very competition, in the MSL, dropped Jadong, defeated Jadong out. And as a result of that, Jadong was forced to play against Flash and therefore went out of the MSL, which I personally believe leaves the road wide open for someone uh, of the likes of Savior uh, to progress very far in the competition uh, and maybe even make it the final and maybe even win the championship uh, with, obviously, um, uh, uh, Jadong, who has an 80% or something close to an 80% Zerg versus Zerg percentage, which is just monstrous. Uh, but nevertheless, this is going to be an interesting game. Luxury's going to have his spire up in a second now. Uh, and obviously, needless to say, this Mutalist Karash is going to be crucial. He has obviously been saving those larvae up. Uh, and Huashin, the, the thing is, Huashin does have the two racks. He's getting those turrets up. So Huashin's going to be in a good place to defend this. But the thing that's worrying me for Huashin is because he's gone for that two racks build, he's still in no position to get that natural expo up and running. So he is going to be in a little bit of pressure. And Luxury is going to be able to take some sort of an economic advantage here. Luxury now sending some Zerglings out as well. Again, uh, against that second rack uh, in anticipation of Huashin. And now Luxury is going to obviously realize that Huashin has lifted that second racks up, which should immediately prompt him, I believe, to put that third hatchery down. He's now putting a hardness down as well. So uh, Luxury obviously not aware that Huashin had lifted that racks up and moved it to his base. Not able to really maximize his build. Now coming in with the Zerglings and the Mutalis. Um, Huashin obviously with the two racks and the turrets. And Huashin now getting that science facility up as well. So Huashin is obviously going to focus on a, a tech build since he did commit himself to that second racks. Uh, and that's why he hasn't gone for that natural expo. And obviously he would have been hard pressed to defend it. Though he does have the two racks pumping out the Marines. So he should have had a decent reinforce. But the key here, we've seen, we've seen this sort of play recently from Terran players where they conserve their resources and they just try and minimize and blunt the Zerg's uh, mutilous Karas to try and nullify it as much as possible, even at the cost of not really uh, getting uh, a massive economy going off their own, and then just try and sit in their base and let the Zerg have their third base, have that third base if he wants to, and it's crucial, crucial for Luxury here if he wants to take a win in this matchup. Uh, and careless by Washington, just leaving a couple of Marines at the edge. It's a little bit like a game of snooker. If you, if you leave a couple of reds out on, on the middle of the table, and, and for, for you Pooh fans, snooker is a far, far superior sport, requiring oodles more skill uh, than you can imagine. But if you leave a couple of reds out, they do get picked off, they do get pocketed, and that's what Luxury is doing. He's taken out three Marines, or I believe two Marines and a Medic already against Huashin, and now he is putting that third hatchery down, but I, I do think that Luxury had an opportunity here to put that third hatchery at another expo and get another gas, maybe at the 8 o'clock expansion, if not the 4 o'clock expansion, uh, but he is he is playing a little bit in Washington's hand, because Washington will be content to just defend and sit and defend, and maybe lose a couple of Marines here and there. Luxury not really doing too much economic damage to him, and Washington's just going to buy this time until he's ready to push out and put the pressure on Luxury, which is probably when he's going to expand. He's now putting another racks down. He's got a science facility up as well. Luxury is setting a couple of hydrants down, which looks like towards that 4 o'clock expansion. Probably going to try and uh, build lurker, lurkers there and then put that hatchery up, but I think he, he could have afforded to put that hatchery down now, and he is indeed morphing lurkers near that 4 o'clock expo, so it looks like Luxury is gearing up to take that expo. Uh, meanwhile, Huashin looks like he's getting ready. Uh, and Huashin, again, even though he was forced to lift that racks, he's not too far behind for uh, a one base tank, uh, early mid game tank push versus Luxury. Uh, and again, Luxury, I'm not sure. Um, Luxury's going to have to fight Huashin in the middle of the map here and, and, and try and defend this uh, because he's not going to be able to get to Defilers, I believe, before that push gets to his door. He's not even got his Queen's Nest building right now. Uh, and, and really, his Mutalus Karas hasn't come to naught, but I prefer if the turn. And it looks like Luxury coming in with four squares. He's going to try and snipe that four science missile here, and then this is going to be critical if Luxury can somehow get a snipe on that first science vessel and it's actually it's actually a starport with control tower obviously with the science vessel coming out I thought the the machine there was a uh, machine shop next to the factory but the factory being floated over so he's actually not ready to make that tank push yet because he hasn't even got a machine shop for his factory uh, and that's that's strange so it looks like we will be seeing a bio bio build from Quash it looks like he's not going for a tank push uh, and that's going to allow Luxury to actually sit in with those lurkers uh, just below Quash's ramp and this is horrible for Quash because he's trapped in here a little bit it looks like Luxury's going to try and sneak in with the scourges in the middle, Squash has already got two science vessels out, so he's really getting that bio build up and running. Uh, but I believe to be really a well, we have seen we have seen Terran players be very effective with purely uh, medics and marines, and, and unfortunately for luxury, he sneaks in with the scourges, takes a couple of hits using the mutilus uh, well to, to shield himself. Uh, but unfortunately for Washin, he really needs to get that natural expo up and running. Uh, and imbalance around in this map, he is in a precarious position right now. He is gonna, I'm sure, push out and take those lurkers down with the with the two science vessels. But he's trying to bleed those lurkers out with a radiate. 
and, and that's a very clever move by Luxury, putting those lurkers, those four lurkers, early four lurkers in at Washington's front door, but really Luxury hasn't taken full advantage of his position here, I feel. He should have gotten that third gas going to really kick himself into high gear. Washington now is building that command center, obviously Washington being the terrible player that he can, can afford to sit back for a little bit longer and build that command center behind uh, his lines while he waits for the Irradiate to take down the lurkers. Now Washington's ready to push down that ramp with the only the one lurker remaining. Luxury coming in with the Mutalist, trying to catch those science vessels down. Great play by Washington, pulls his, and, and Washington again, playing to his strengths, and I think that's the right thing for him to play to his strengths. Uh, obviously, Medic and Marine Micro is his strength, so a bio build does suit his, his style of play, and Washington with some good Micro, avoiding the scourge hits on those two science vessels. Luxury with a couple of... Initially, Luxury hasn't gone for Burrow. I think Burrow is a great tech for Zero players to go for, especially on a map like this, and Luxury now coming out with another four lurkers up the middle of the map. He's going to run right into those... Medic and Marines here, and he's going to lose one Lurker very, very carelessly. He's going to try and take advantage of that to pick off a Science Vessel, and Luxury using the Lurkers as a shield to pick off the Science Vessel, but I believe a Siege Tank is also out for Washington. Luxury is in huge trouble now, because well, he's lost all of his Mutalists in it, and three, or I believe was it, four Lurkers that he lost to take out one Science Vessel, and that's got to just be so painful for him. He has got his economy kicked up now. He's got his three hatchery build going. He still hasn't put a queen's nest down as far as I can tell, but he has, look, it looks like, taken that four o'clock base. Uh, but it's going to be difficult for him to